Good. Thank you so much. So my name is Liju Gopinath, and um, I will be your trainer for the next uh, three days. And we will be looking into Linux administration basics. Okay. So I basically hail from uh, Kerala, and um, I have been working into Linux and around this technology for almost 21 years. My area of expertise basically revolves around Linux administration, containers, um, uh, Linux performance tuning, troubleshooting, uh, solution designs around Linux, right? For the next uh, 15 minutes, uh, I would want you to just introduce yourself. I want your name. I want your, your where you're coming from and if you have any prior experience on Linux, okay? That's what I want to know you from. Okay, so maybe um, um, we can start with um, Anand, Anand Kumar Ray. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. You can call me Liju. You don't need to address me as sir. Uh, you can call me as Liju. My name is Anand Kumar Ray. Mm -hmm. From Bihar. Hello. Okay. Uh, do you have any prior experience on Linux? No, sir. My higher qualification is graduation. Okay, 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 cool. Thank you so much. So if you have learned anything about uh, Unix or Linux in your college? No, sir. Okay, no worries. Okay, thank you so much, Anand. Thank you, sir. No problem. And um, we'll go with um, Anand A.D. Anand Edi, can you please introduce yourself with your name, your hailing place, and your prior experience on Linux? Uh, hi, sir. Um, I'm Anand Edi. Mm -hmm. You're from? Hello? Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're audible. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sir, myself found on the AD. Where are you from, basically? Yeah, uh, sir, I'm from Okaimatu, based. Okay. Uh, and uh, I joined in this uh, in the organization uh, past three months, bro, before three months. Okay. And uh, the organization uh, like me to give me a SQL and Linux training. So I'm undergoing uh, uh, SQL training, uh, which was completed yesterday, and uh, I know Linux is going on. So you don't have any prior so experience will... on Linux, right? Yeah, I'm a fresher. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Chandru, Chandru Vikas. Yeah, I'm here. Sir. Can I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Please. Uh, myself, Chandru Vikas, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm also from from Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also fresher in this organization for the past two weeks. So I joined this organization for the past two weeks. Uh, I'm also fresher too. And uh, they gave me training in Linux and PSQL. Okay. So you don't have any prior experience on Linux, right? Uh, yeah, I don't have any. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chandra. Um, uh, Humaira Khan, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yeah, sir. Hello, I'm Humaira Khan. Okay. And uh, I'm based from Mumbai, and uh, I'm a fresh in Unix too. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Humera, thank you so much. And uh, Jay Prada R. Hi, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. You're audible. Hi, sir. I'm Jay Prada from Salem. Mm hmm. I don't have any experience on Linux, sir. This is my first time. Okay, okay. Okay, no worries. We are here to learn Linux. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Jay Prada. And uh, then we have got um, Madan, Madan Kumar. Hi. Hi, I'm Madan Kumar. Hello. Yeah, yeah. you're on. Yeah. Hello? You are audible. You can speak. I can hear you. So I am also from Kamakura and I am a... 
Hello. I can hear you. I can hear you. You can speak. We are. We. Um, I can. Sir, I'm. I'm also from. I'm a professor on the. I'm also a professor. Okay. Okay. Now it is. Okay. Thank you so much. Ah, yes. ah, thank you. And uh, now we have uh, Manoj Rawat. Yes. Uh, good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, myself, Manoj Rawat. I belong to Agra UP. Okay. And uh, I have a, I am also a fresher and I have no experience uh, uh, on the working projects uh, and also on, uh, I have no experience on uh, Linux operating system. Okay. And uh, I recently finished my uh, PLSQL training yesterday. Okay, okay. Thank you. So Taj Mahal is near to you or? Is far yeah, 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 sir. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Manoj. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, Manoj Prabhak. Karan. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Manoj Prabhan, sir. And uh, I'm from Coimbatore. Mm -hmm. I'm a professor, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, Manoj. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, sir. Uh, Muruga Bhupati. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, this is Muruga Bhupati from Tirupur. Mm -hmm. And I'm pressure too, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, Muruga. Thank you, sir. Uh, Nitesh Tiwari. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I'm from Mumbai mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also fresh and working for NSCIT past six months on cloud com computing domain. Okay. And uh, I'm, uh, uh, I have no prior experience in Linux, so just learning for first time. Okay. Okay. No worries. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Um, Sarangi Gujar. Oh, very good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, myself, Sarangi Gujar. I am from Mumbai. I don't have any experience on Linux, but I have a little bit knowledge about Linux. I am also fresher. Okay, okay. Okay, Sarangi. Uh, thank thank you, you so much. And uh, Selva Vigay, Selva Vignesh. Hi, sir. Hello. Hello. Hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Myself, Selva Vignesh. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have any experience in Linux before, so okay. I'm from Coimbatore. Okay, okay, Salva Vignesh. Uh, thank you so much. Sridha Vaghukar. Yeah, uh, uh, good. Exactly? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm okay. Sridha Vaghukar and I'm from Mumbai. Okay. Uh, and I'm a fresher in Linux as well. Okay, okay, Sridha. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, Shubham Bill Gonkar, Bill Gonkar, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Good Shubham, morning, sir. Good morning. So, uh, like I'm from Navi Mumbai and okay. I'm also a fresher. Okay, 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 Shubham, thank you so much. Um, Venkatesh M. Hi, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, tell me, Venkatesh. Hi, uh, I'm Venkatesh from Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu. Okay. I'm experienced uh, Windows Server and networking. Okay. I have basic knowledge about Linux. Uh, then how can configure the uh, IP that like? Okay. Uh, I'm also pressure for this field. Okay. Okay. Okay, Venkatesh. Uh, thank you so much. And. Uh, Yash Patel. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Yash and uh, I am from Mumbai and uh, I have done BEIT and mm -hmm. uh, I am a fresher as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have just a little bit of knowledge in Linux, which has been taught in our college. Okay. 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 Thank you, Yash. Thank you, sir. Um, I think, did I miss anyone? Guna, Guna V Pandian. Guna? Guna, can you please introduce yourself? <clears throat> Guna, um, am I audible to you?
Okay. Uh, we will move to, I think, Jatin. Jatin Mandalia. Jatin, you there? Okay, I guess uh, Jatin and Guna, uh, they might be having some trouble logging in. No worries, uh, we will uh, um, uh, get introduced to them at a later point of time. So, uh, <clears throat> I hope uh, Lakshmi would have already um, um, passed you some documentations of like how to download the ISO and uh, installing um, uh, Linux um, uh, and a virtual machine, okay? So uh, how many have, of you have uh, done it? If, if you have done it, can you please uh, uh, put a yes in the chat? Or if you have not done, uh, uh, can you please put no? Uh, uh, no worries, Jatin. Uh, 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 not a problem. Um, we'll talk to you later if um, if you have some technical issues. Uh, Guna, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Guna? Okay, I think majority of people have not done it. So Lakshmi would have already forwarded you one documentation in which, um, uh, uh, in which um, uh, no problem, Guna, um, we'll talk to you later uh, if you have a problem with your mic. So um, in which it is clearly mentioned that uh, how to download uh, Oracle virtual machine and how to install it in your system and how to create an account with Red Hat and download the Red Hat ISO. Right, even though you can do it with any other thing, but uh, to be on a standardized factor, because um, I think your organization uses Red Hat, we'll be sticking on to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Okay, so I'm not sure that key um, without installing how you're going to do practicals, because this is um, this course is mostly involved. This course mostly involves um, a practical session. You want to do something on your end. Okay. So people who have not done it, uh, please uh, uh, devote some time to download the ISO and install the OS um, uh, as soon as possible. Okay, uh, meanwhile, I will be showing demonstrations of um, Linux, how you do it. So Linux is basically um, uh, <clears throat> an operating system and um, uh, it has got both uh, terminal interface uh, that is CLI you called command line interface and it has also got uh, a GUI that is called GUI interface, a graphical user interface, okay? But uh, when you work on the enterprise platform and you work on the servers and all those things, 99% of the time you will be working on the command line. I would say 100% of the time you will be working on the command line interface, right? So today's sessions, uh, the three days of the session will be completely focused on CLI, that is command line interface. Okay. Uh, Bharati, uh, um, if you haven't, uh, did you receive any uh, documentation on, on how to install uh, Linux on your laptop? Sorry, uh, on a virtual machine that is using, okay. Um, Okay, I, I guess, um, I think, okay, you just logged in. Yeah, you have to install Red Hat uh, Linux uh, on VirtualBox. First, you have to install VirtualBox. The documentation have been passed. Um, I'm not sure that why you haven't received it. Uh, not a problem. Nobody's, I will ask uh, uh, Lakshmi to forward it again to the candidates. 
so maybe or if anyone has it um, uh, you can just forward to uh, bharti uh, nikeshan yeah bharti you just logged in can you please introduce yourself to us hello good morning sir yeah bharti tell me uh, actually i'm arvind chitty it's my brother's mobile i'm having some issue okay uh, i'm from arirul sir okay uh, I completed my degree in 2019. Actually, I'm a civil engineer. Okay. Due to some personal issues, I'm logging into IT. Mm. No worries, man. So, everyone, everyone, whether it is mechanical, civil, everyone lands up in IT. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there's okay. no, there's no cause of concern. Okay. Okay. No worries, that's good that you're here, um, uh, so that you can learn and welcome to the world of IT. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay. Uh, so Lakshmi has just messaged that um, if you could share your email address uh, here, uh, Lakshmi will be forwarding the uh, documentation details, uh, which which is basically straightforward with screenshots. You just have to download the virtual machine first, install it in your Windows laptop or your desktop, wherever you're working on, and then you have to basically log, create an account in Red Hat um every url everything is given in the documentation once you create an account you have to download an iso uh, basically a dvd image it's uh, close to 4 gb it will definitely take some time so if you cannot download it today uh, maybe tonight you can download it and install it uh, before uh, uh, next day's class that is tomorrow's class okay okay guys uh, thank you so much uh, for having you here and uh, I see that most of the people are from Mumbai and uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, and a few are from other places. Um, then, and um, I also see that many other people, um, many other people um, don't have any prior experience on Linux. Uh, that is fine. Uh, we are here to learn Linux. Uh, Manoj, um, uh, as I mentioned, everything, every link, everything will be in the documentation, uh, step by step. Uh, um, you can just follow the documentation. Okay. If you don't have the documentation, please share the email address here. Uh, Lakshmi will be forwarding you the documentation. Okay. Uh, cool. So let's start with um, Linux. Uh, today's uh, class basically will be um, a mix and match of uh, theoretical as well as practical session. I'm not sure there are cases many other people have not installed Linux, how you're going to do it out, but uh, there's no need of worry. The session is recorded. Uh, you can always um, uh, go through this recorded session so that uh, you can basically practice this. I will also be giving assignments to you in meanwhile. People who have the system, you can do the assignments. Or people who don't have it, you can do at later point of time. Not a problem of concern. Okay. And uh, if you have any issues, uh, please feel to interrupt me in between, or you can put me in the chat. Uh, put your questions in the chat so that um, so that um, uh, I can answer you uh, uh, as I see it. Okay, and uh, please, when you are not talking, uh, you can mute yourself uh, so that um, the others are not uh, disturbed with the background noise. Okay, man, thank you so much. So let's start it. So I will be sharing um, a presentation now, uh, which we will go through. So in the presentation, when I'm doing the presentation, maybe I will not see the chat. So please excuse me for that. Uh, I will be looking into the chat uh, frequently. Uh, so as and when I see it, I will just um, try to answer your query. Okay. Okay. So I hope everyone can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So these are a um, uh, few of the topics that uh, will be coming, but don't just look into the topics. Um, um, we'll be basically covering the covering the uh, uh, introduction about Linux, basically about uh, user management, user administration, file management, uh, how you deal with different files, permissions, um, how you identify um, different OS versions, different commands, and Linux, and so on and so. Okay. 
So uh, just go through a little bit of history of Linux and few of the people who have been associated with Linux. So I think in your, um, all of you might be familiar with uh, this great personality. He is basically uh, Dennis Ritchie. He's no more with us. And he's basically the inventor of C and what do you call Unix is basically a simple operating system, but you have to be a genius to understand the simplicity. That's just basically a tagline that he has given earlier. So uh, I hope everyone um, uh, knows about it. People who don't know, I would argue to have a, a Google about it because um, uh, these are the few personalities basically because of which uh, we are here uh, with Linux and um, uh, which would be maybe your bread and butter in the coming years to come, okay? So basically Dennis Ritchie is known for the, uh, known, for, known for its C. Okay, C language, which he basically uh, developed with his colleague, right? So uh, we will also be um, uh, learning about a um, uh, 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 few of the uh, creators of uh, uh, creators uh, or the personalities that is involved uh, behind Unix, right? So uh, before that, let's uh, talk about Linux. What is basically Linux, okay? So, um, <clears throat> Linux is basically, when I talk about Linux, Linux is basically a unix light operating system. Like you have Windows, uh, you have got uh, Solaris, um, AIX, HPUX, right? DOS, right? So these are different operating system and that you can work on. Um, so Linux is also basically an operating system. For time being, you just have to understand Linux is basically an operating system. So it is basically a Unix-like operating system, okay? Uh, you can't say that it is Unix because Unix uh, was also an operating, there was an operating system sometimes back called Unix. Um, and today also people use Unix in some of the other form. Um, so basically Linux is an operating system. Okay, and everyone, I hope everyone understands what is operating system, which helps you to basically, uh, what is a perform some activity on the system, right? It could be as simple as like opening a file or it could be as complex as like uh, um, uh, rendering a uh, movie image, right? A movie, like for example, you would have seen many movies um, nowadays, the science fictions and all those things, right? So how are these movies made? Many of these movies uh, are shot uh, at some of the other um, uh, scenes and many of these things are integrated together with other components using using operating system, okay? They have got specialized uh, effects, special effects and all those things, uh, which is possible only because of computing. And for many of these uh, special effects and all those things, uh, basically, um, um, uh, what do you say, operating systems like Linux is being used, yep. So before we move on to uh, uh, Linux, uh, why is Linux so popular and uh, uh, what makes it so special? Okay, so the first thing you would be hearing about Linux is basically um, is that it is open source, it is free. Okay, that is what something you might be hearing about Linux, right? So you have to understand that what is what is free in 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 open source, right? So um, you would have gone through Windows. Like basically many other people have windows in the system right you probably would have used uh, uh, everyone would have like smartphones like you would have mac i'm um, apple phones you would have got uh, samsung maybe nokia at some point of time earlier you have used i don't know um, and obviously i'm sure that 100 percent of the people might be having this um, android or smartphones with them right so um what are these like these are all operating systems Right, so you have Windows in your laptops, but you have lim you have limitations with that. Right, that means uh, um, you can only you can only operate with that. You can't make modifications to the operating system code. You can't see the source code of the operating system, right, or the applications or the program that is running inside that. Correct. Right? So you don't have any access to the source code. Since you don't have any access to the source code, you have limitations, correct? Uh, you can't modify that code to enhance the feature or the functionality of the program, got it? So any of the operating system or the program uh, which do not give you the source code of the program which is running in it, right? So those systems are called closed source systems. That means you don't have the control on the system 
right? You might have, you might have a system administration control to make few changes in the operating system at the from the front end point of view, but not from the back end point of view. Okay, so uh, Linux is basically an open source system. That means um, you can have access to your source code. Uh, you can download it from the vendor whoever provides this. Um, um, what is the release of the operating system? It is available easily from the uh, internet. You can download the source code. You can view the code, how it is written. I'm pretty sure that everyone would know how the how a coding is written. Written. You would have done some or the other form of coding, especially on the C, right in your college days. So uh, you have access to the code. So if you know what is uh, what is the importance of having access to the code, right? So if you have access to the code, you know how the how the program works, right? But if you don't have access to the code, you cannot know how the program. You you can just install it, use it, but you know, but you may not know how the program basically works in the system, right? So that is that is where the open source comes into picture. As the name suggests, it is open source. The source is open; everyone can view it, right? It also has got something called licensing. Which is called GPL General Public Licensing. Uh, you've got different versions of licensing, GPL version one, two, three. Uh, but basically, whatever version it is, the um, the common uh, takeaway of this uh, uh, licensing is that uh, uh, the whatever program or whatever, if you are contributing to the open source, uh, whatever program you are writing, and if you want, if you want to publish this um, program in open source you have to make it public, right? You are accepting to a license agreement that I am giving the source code along with it. Anyone can modify it, anyone can use it. And if, if the others want to make modification to the source code, yes, you can do it, but under a condition that you have to publish your source code as well, right? So it is that is what you're, op you're open. That means you're taking something from someone and you are obliged to give that particular stuff with your changes to others to free of cost. Correct. So that is basically uh, what you called as free in the sense of freedom. So um, with open source, you have got freedom to to make changes to the code, to use the code to your need, to modify it to your to your need, right? But it also says that if you are using it, you are writing, you are making modifications. You have to give your code also as free. It's not like you are you are taking everything as free, but you are keeping it with yourself and you are, you are not giving it to the society, to the community, right? So Linux is more about the socializing, right? You are, you are socializing with people uh, by, by, um, by giving your ideas in the form of code, right? To make this world a better place so that um, many other people uh, who uses this program, uh, they can fix bugs, they can um, they can improve the software in a much better and quicker way, and um, many people have will have access to the uh, to the program. What happens is that if the program is uh, basically um, source or closed source, why people make closed source? Because they don't want uh, people to make modifications to that, right? Why? Because if they make, then they can change the program as they want, and the people will lose money, right? So this is like um, something called free meals, okay? Um, um, I know that there is nothing called free meals, but it's an imaginary concept, right? So um, you, you have, when you have access to source code or the program, which is open, uh, you can take it, you can use it to your need. You don't um, uh, have to be liable or, uh, or obliged to anyone, right? Uh, but, but like Windows, right, which is not a, open source you you have licensing term you can't install the operating system in your in your computer or laptop without purchasing a license right if you're installing windows it is illegal right so if microsoft one day comes and knows that hey you're in you're in, in you're using a microsoft windows software in your computer have you paid for it if you're not paid for it then they might even sue you right so Technically speaking, if you are installing an unlicensed version of any software in your uh, computer, uh, then that means um, uh, you are doing a criminal offense, correct? So open source do not have any such problems. You can download it, you can install it, you can modify it, whatever you want to do. That, that's a freedom. That's why it's called free, 
okay now people might ask that ki many of the organizations are there like red hat or uh, suze or canonical that is ubuntu that gives ubuntu um, they also charge for the clients right then why it is uh, if it is free then why that happens so free is in the sense of freedom right you can download the source code you can use it you can modify it you can make changes to it um, they charge only for the service like for example red hat or ubuntu or suze um, or such um, vendors they are called basically vendors they charge for their service service means uh, they basically hire people to develop the soft softwares uh, and provide um, bug fixes to to the enterprise customers right so your organization would be using red hat basically so they might be paying a um, a um, pretty good amount of money to red hat right why they pay because risk every now and then there are bugs fixes identify security loopholes that have been identified then who will fix this yes there are people who can fix it out in the open source but um, for an enterprise customer right this they need uh, some form of service where, where who someone would be responsible for it right so that is where red hat or these vendors comes into picture they take the open source they make an operating system of their own and they label it like red hat suze ubuntu debian or anything like that and they sell it to the customer they are not selling the software they are basically selling the subscription and what they are selling the subscription for they are basically charging the subscription for the service service in the sense that what they are offering like for example you raise a case with red hat say i have issues with the operating system then there are people who will come and help you out right you are you they are charging for this service right you are saying that they, um, uh, a bug has been identified in a program who will fix it so there is red hat there is red hat uh, who will basically it will be red hat who will be basically uh, fixing this uh, software right and they will be providing a bug fix to the software and they will be providing it to you correct so that is where uh, this things comes into picture so that is where the red hat basically charges you or the linux vendor from where you have purchased the licensing or the subscription for the uh, vendor software uh, they will be charging you for this okay that is where the uh, subscription cost comes in so don't uh, misunderstand subscription uh, with uh, windows licensing and right? you can download linux you can install it no one is going to question you but if you download windows first thing is that you will not get windows to download it second is that even if you get windows from some other third party source or something like that uh you are not supposed to install on your operating on your laptop or your computer right because you don't have a license to it right so this is where open source comes into picture okay so few of few history which i will just go through quickly um it's basically unix and um uh, uh unix everyone knows uh, basically was released in atnt bell laboratories in 1991 this was the first release of the unix operating system and um, their started concept of open source uh, from 1984 uh, which basically led to the initial growth and the popularity but linux basically came into picture in late 1991 right uh, before that there was a person called i don't know whether if you have heard about this person or seen this um, his name is uh, richard m stallman he basically uh, worked on the gnu project gnu means the gnu's not unix okay so unix was also a closed source project just like windows if you can call uh, unix was also closed the, the source code of it was not uh, published right you can't have access to the source code how it works you never no one know you can just use it with um, a licensing term right so richard m stallman was a person who started developing he is basically a programmer who started developing uh, softwares right uh, which could be published uh, to the to the community who uses it so basically if you want to uh, create some software create some application uh, run some application on the unix so basically what it did, did is that be, basically he developed a software he developed a program right it could be as simple it could be as simple as like a text editor right like you have something called notepad in windows similar to that um, uh, he developed something called text editor and uh, the beauty of the text editor was that uh, the source code when you install this uh, application the source code was accessible to everyone 
right? Who who have installed the software. So that means you can make changes to the software. You can, if you are a programmer, you can make changes. You can put your own ideas, right? You, if you find a bug, you can fix it, right? That's how that's how this GNU project started. So over a period of time, a lot of people started contributing. It. This community started becoming bigger, more and more. Um, applications started developing uh, the application which was closed source, which did some purpose. For example, say something like in older days, it could be a, a simple program as like formatting some file or or doing some calculation, right? So they were closed source programs. Then uh, Richard M. Stallman and his team started developing many applications uh, which mimicked the original program. And those were like free software. So more and more people started using free software, why? Right? They don't have to pay for the license. They don't have to pay money for it. Obviously, something which you get free, more and more people will be using it, correct? So if you find that um, in the community, um, um, not all the people have got expensive phones like um, like um, uh, Apple, correct? So Apple phones, right, or, or a iMac book because it is too expensive. But the features that you get in it, you can get it in any of the latest technologies in mobile, like um, any of the uh, Chinese branded mobiles or even India made brand mobiles, right? You will you will find in, uh, almost 99% of the feature over there. Correct. So uh, people are interested in performing works rather than knowing that who developed it. Yes, <clears throat> of course, people who want to go for brand values and all those things, they opt for it. But otherwise, if you just want to have the work done, you can use anything, right? So their objective was to basically get it in more of in the sense of freedom. So the initial uh, um, kickstart basically, which um, um, which which basically initiated this operating system was by a guy called um, Andrew S. Tenenbaum. And I hope everyone knows this guy. You would have studied about it in your college days. So he developed a Unix uh, like operating system just for educational purpose, right? Because he wanted to teach people how operating system work. He wanted to teach his uh, students like how operating system worked, right? For that, he developed an operating system called Minix. Right? Before that, um, uh, what do you say? Um, the Richard M. Stallman, he only developed programs, but he didn't have something called as an entire operating system, right? What is operating system basically? Operating system is a combination of basically different stuffs, like basically uh, the core component will be the kernel, right? The kernel uh, is the core component of the operating system, which, which manages the operating system, which manages the memory, CPU, input, output, all those things. So who, who is basically the head of the operating system, right? Uh, just with the operating system, you cannot do. What happens if you don't have a WordPad, if you don't have a Microsoft Excel or Word or, or a movie player or video player, what do you will do? You can't do much into that, right? Right, just right clicking desktop and uh, creating folders will not help you. Right, you have to you have some applications to perform your jobs. Correct. So, uh, um, uh, Richard and Stallman and his team basically had uh, many of these applications, but he didn't add basically an operating system to to perform uh, this job. So basically, he used Unix uh, to install these applications. Right. So later, when um, uh, Minix uh, was introduced by uh, Andrew Stenob in, in late 1987, um, um, he basically popularized it among the students to, to understand how an operating system works. So more and more people, uh, basically students came to know that how a Unix-like operating system basically worked, right? So um, one of the students basically, uh, um, uh, uh, not so one of his students, sorry. So basically, there was a guy called um, Linux, Linus, not Linux, Linus Benedict Torvalds. Um, uh, what he did is that uh, during his college days, he studied about uh, Minix uh, because obviously it was uh, meant for that. And um, he took Minix and wrote a kernel to replace Minix kernel. Okay, he understood how a Minix uh, kernel works. So, what it is that he had a deep understanding of it. He wrote his own kernel. As I told that, what kernel does? Kernel is basically um, uh, a controller. Like it's he's like a it's like a head of the family. What it does? It basically controls the memory, CPU, input, output, all the resources management, and everything. Right. So it interacts with the hardware. It interacts with the user. 
right? Many things that it does. It was a basically a simple program at that time. So he wrote its own kernel. Then what he did is that he adopted GNU applications. Uh, uh, from whom? Basically uh, from the GNU project, right? You know that there's a GNU project uh, which was led by uh, Richard M. Stallman, right? So he had the kernel because he developed it uh, um, by taking an idea from Linux. And then he adopted GNU projects application. Because why? Because those application was free, correct? He used it. He basically published, before doing that, he basically published that I have a kernel. If people want to contribute to it, yes, they can contribute. They have ideas on it, how it is working and so and so. <clears throat> so many people started looking into it. And uh, obviously he came to know about that there's a GNU project. He started adopting applications from it. And then basically a full-fledged, um, operating system at that time, even though it's not that big as what we have right now, but a, a Unix-like operating system was released in 1991, which basically he called it as Linux. Why Linux? Basically, he said that uh, Linux store was Unix. Okay, why? Because it has basically, uh, you call it as Unix or Minix, right? So Minix is also a miniaturized version of Unix, what you call it. So that's how Linux is developed. Right. But technically speaking, if you call what is, if you ask me what is Linux, so Linux is basically a kernel. Okay. But generally, today, since people uh, call it as operating system, but basically it is just a kernel. <clears throat> okay. So as I told you, that operating system is not only kernel, but kernel plus applications. That is where the operating system um, uh, comes into picture. Clear? Okay, so Linux has a symbol, um, uh, which is basically tux. Um, uh, for some reason, um, basically it is told that um, uh, Linux M. Torvalds basically was on his vacation and he came across a penguin and he wanted, he liked it so much that he wanted to use it as a emblem for his Linux kernel. Okay, that's how the tux came as the um, emblem. So tux is basically, or the penguin symbol is basically the symbol for a Linux kernel. Okay, it's not symbol for Red Hat or Debian or SUSE or Ubuntu. Okay, it's basically a symbol for kernel. So <clears throat> what are the current developments? Basically it is used in embedded software like your mobile, right? Your All your smartphones, if you're using smartphones, right? Whatever smartphones basically from Samsung, OnePlus, Redmi, MI, whatever it is, right? So all these things basically uses embedded software, which is basically a miniature version of your kernel, sorry, or your, or your Linux, right? So uh, which they call it as Android. So basically Google took this kernel and they miniaturized it, they, they uh, ported it into their, um, <clears throat> what to say, um, uh, mobile devices and they, they made a soft operating system out of it and they released as an Android. So anyone who uses Android based software, they can have access to the Google Play Store and also and so, right? So this is basically this uh, thing and um, uh, where Linux are used, not only embedded normal servers, your desktop, your supercomputers, all the, I want to say, weather handling, weather forecasting, many of the supercomputers, robotics, um, uh, high-end surgeries, research and development, everywhere you name it, uh, Linux is being used, okay? And um, uh, Linux distributions, like, so you would have heard about, like, I, have, I, would, I would have been speaking about, or I have been speaking about Red Hat, SUSE, what are these? So these are also operating system, but these are all Linux, right? So whatever, you the name you are like Linux, uh, sorry, Red Hat, SUSE, Debian, uh, many of the flavors are there. Like um, you can see uh, Oracle Linux, uh, Ubuntu, Arc Linux, CentOS, Fedora. These are very few. There are hundreds and um, of releases they are available. Why it is there? Because it's open source. Why it is open source? Because uh, Linux Torvalds says that uh, yes, and GNU it he releases it under GPL, which says that general public licensing, everyone can use it, right? So they took this operating system, um, made some modifications, put their emblems and they modified it. They had their own applications or something like that, which is even source, open source. Everything is uh, open source and they release it in their name. So Red Hat takes uh, the Linux kernel 
uh, basically from the upstream. If you go to www.linux.kernel.org, www right? So you will find the latest kernel which is available over there, right? So if you are a developer, if you know how to write codes and all those things, you can also download the kernel and you can also build your own operating system, Linux operating system. Yes, of course, it's not that easy task. It requires a lot of other components, but yes, uh, you can do it. That's what I'm saying, okay? So these are called as distribution. So when you uh, hear about Red Hat, we call it as well, because it is called Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So SUSE we call as less, it's called as uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. So why it is called <clears throat> Enterprise Server basically? Um, because these organizations who, who ship uh, these uh, <clears throat> Linux distribution, they charge customers for the service or the subscription, right? And they charge for like yearly basis, one year, two year, three year, depending upon the money that you pay for. <clears throat> so, and they basically uh, make a commitment that uh, we will be supporting you um, uh, or supporting this distribution for another five years, 10 years, right? So uh, many of the people who run business, they don't want to have this operating system very latest and there are some bug problems, bugs and all those things. Uh, you obviously know when there is a new program, there will be a lot of bugs and all those things, right? Because it is not well tested. So there's Red Hat, uh, Suze, Oracle, all these people who provide enterprise distribution, they basically have a have lot of employees who basically test this operating system, ensure that bug is not there and only then release. Then they are committed to support this uh, operating system for another five years, 10 years. That is what they charge for, okay? So uh, this is basically a small history about um, uh, Linux and its distribution, how it's originated. And um, <clears throat> now we'll be looking on operating systems, like what general understanding of operating system. So I'll take a pause for two minutes and I just want to understand that if you have any questions on this. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. So operating system, as I told, that it compounds, it consists of many things, right? Uh, the process manager. When you run a when you run a program, right, there is a process which gets created, right? Process nothing is basically the threads or or, or the small program which basically is waiting for the CPU, um, is waiting for the CPU's time, right? So that it can execute. When it gets executed in the CPU, you get the result, right? So that is what you call it as process. So if there are a lot of process, if there are a lot of programs that is running, who will manage it? There should be someone who will manage it, right? So the, uh, so the kernel basically does this uh, process management. Right. Whenever a process is created, it basically allocates a number to it. When a process gets killed, that means when a process dies um, because uh, he has completed his operation, right? then the kernel has to do some cleaning tasks and all those things. So this all done is basically known as process management and is done by the kernel. Right? So there are interrupts. Interrupts means um, basically you are working on something and, and the program gets interrupted and and your CPU tasks or your CPU attention need to be deviated to that particular task, right? So this is basically an interrupt. <clears throat> memory management, right? How much memory to be allocated? How much memory to be released from the program, right? Memory management. Then file system. If you want to write something to a hard disk, right? Your storage devices, right? You, you need a particular thing called file system, right? Who takes care of this? Then device drivers. Right, so um, something like um, you attach a USB, right? You everyone might have come across USB, right? <clears throat> or you attach a uh, say a mouse, right? A, a wired mouse or a wireless mouse, right? How it is recognized by the operating system? Right? You might have mouse from different vendors, but how is that your operating system recognizes it? It's because of a small program called device driver, right? So which device driver uh, uh, knows that how to interact with this particular hardware, right? So then there is networking, 
you have got uh, why it is possible that today I am sitting in a remote location, you are right, sitting in various location and you are attending the classes. Why, how is this possible? This is because of networking, right? Um, uh, security, right? I, I uh, log into this, but only you people can log into this. Uh, people from outside cannot log into the session to attend the session, right? Small example of security, right? IO, input output device. You are attached your mouse, you, I'm presenting you, uh, through a share, um, I can type in, right? If I can print it, so these are IO devices. So these are all different components, I would say, right? Uh, just on a high level view. So these are all um, some 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 programs um, or, or what do you call some functionality uh, which makes an operating system possible, right? So an operating system, what do you call operating? Operating system is comprised of all those things. Not only this, there are other components. I'll just spoken only about the uh, system level point of view, okay? But for a minimum operating system to work on, you need these things to be there, right? Not every computer will have a, um, if you're using Microsoft, not every computer will have a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, right? If I'm not presenting anything, why do I need it, right? But maybe everyone would need a WordPad or a Notepad because you want to write something on that, right? Any point you have to create a file but not everyone will be creating a PowerPoint presentation. Not everyone would need a media player. People who want to um, um, uh, view video or hear music, maybe they would go for a media player. If I'm not using, for example, in a, in a server, why do I need a media player? I don't need it, right? So these are application software. Application software are user specific. That means if a user needs it, only then he need to install it, otherwise not. But a file system, a memory management, process management, device driver, networking, these are the core components without which you cannot work. Okay, so these are the core components of the operating system. Now, coming back how these things are um, uh, basically clubbed together. So it's basically, you can say that um, it, it the overall um, structure or the high level view consists of two things. One is basically your hardware and secondly, your software. Hardware of course, is your laptop, your desktop, whatever it is. But inside that, the core components are basically what? The CPU, your RAM, the IO devices. These are the core components. There are many other components, but these are basically the core components. Now, when you install an operating system on top of this hardware, right? Um, so that software is basically called as operating system. An operating system has got two components. One is system software and one is application software, correct? So system softwares are basically the components which we just showed in the previous slide, uh, the device drivers, um, memory management, but these are all programs, okay? So these are all um, uh, part of system software. Then there is application software, um, like your PowerPoint presentation, your WordPad, your media player, right? So these are user specific. If a user wants it, they can install it. Otherwise, not. Like you learned about PLSQ, right? So if you want to um, run some application or pro, you need to run some or install some PLSQL uh, application so that you can connect to a database, you can run some query and uh, get those details. So there are users on top of it. So I'm a user, you are a user, you interact. Like for example, you logged into Zoom today. So Zoom is an application, right? Where it runs, it basically runs in a computer, right? You log in. So user interacts with the application software, uh, which does something. What it does, it basically gives you a presentation. I'm presenting something and you can see it, right? So that's where the operating system uh, component basically comes in. So basically what are two components? Hardware and software. And software, what do you have? System software and application software. User interacts with the application software. It doesn't interact with the system software directly, okay? So now you have the a more deeper architecture of this uh, component, okay? So it's like um, um, the kernel, the hardware platform, you can say that uh, uh, the green color, what you see is basically a hardware platform. In, uh, it's basically a, a whole of the component, right? In which you can see in the left side, uh, it is tagged as GNU slash Linux. Why is it called GNU slash Linux? Because GNU is not Unix, because it comes under GPL licensing, right? And the whole of the operating system is basically divided into two parts. One is kernel space and one is user space. Kernel space means the system software and all those things which um, directly interacts with the hardware. 
user space means your user space programs basically your libraries right you obviously you would know about libraries right your libraries your application programs and all that in linux you have a library called gnu uh, c library or you call it as glibc okay in linux wherever linux you are working you will be having an application for a library which is called glibc which basically helps you to interact with different programs and all those things so the core takeaway is that the user space and kernel space this is something which you want to understand okay this these are high level views of this operating system okay the next slide is basically a pictorial representation of like whatever we have told uh, hardware in the core component and on top of it it has got kernel on top of it has got shell and application so these all comprises of your operating system applications means utilities your wordpad excel microsoft um, i want to say your uh, powerpoint presentation media player whatever it is so whatever i have told right now it is not only specific to linux but also specific to windows or any operating system that means it is a hardware kernel every operating system will have a kernel whether it is windows linux whatever it is every application operating system will have its own applications utility programs right even windows also provide terminals where you can log in and uh, perform these activities right and other things are like input output devices like your printers this cd drives usb drives um uh, barcode scanners whatever you name it right so this is basically a overall diagram of your um of your hardware plus operating system your applications and all those things okay so basically now we will be talking uh, more on from the linux point of view from this slide onwards okay so uh, before that uh, i would like to say that um, we we'll, the session is basically a three day session so we will take a uh, 10 to 15 minutes of break um, uh, which will be a tea break short or bio break what you call and then we will have something called 45 minutes to 1 hour of like lunch break mm, uh, so this whole of the session is basically a 20 hour session so we will be taking a three days complete session today monday and um, tuesday uh so last day obviously we might cut short the break or the other things for to reduce to half an hour or something like that so that we would completely uh, cover the 20 hours of session okay so i plan to um uh go for a break uh, something like by um 11:15 uh so that uh, we could go with uh, these sessions Okay, so eleven fifteen we'll go for a break and then we'll come back by eleven thirty and then the session will continue till one and uh, one to two we will be having a lunch break and then we'll be going for a break somewhere between four or four fifteen and then we'll wind up by five thirty. Okay, are you all okay with this plan or do you want to make some changes? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. so basically whenever you log into the linux terminal <clears throat> okay command line as i told that 99% of the time or i will say 100% of the time time when you log into the uh, uh, linux terminal you will be presented with two prompts basically okay one is basically the hash what you could see this hash temple and second is basically the dollar these are the two prompts that you will see in linux unless and until it is customized okay so uh, these are the two prompts that you can see the in linux basically there are two type of users i would say okay one is a super user who can do anything on the system okay so when i see anything on the system he can even destroy the system right so be careful the objective of this course is to introduce towards linux and to make sure that you what to do and what not to do okay so please understand it very carefully that whenever you are executing a command or something like that you have to be very sure that what prompt you are if you are in hash prompt then you are having a root privilege okay root privilege means root is a user which is basically called as a super user in linux which are linux red hat debian suse whatever it is because all users the same kernel right every any distribution they use all users the same kernel but the application interface kernel parameters change they might differ but same kernel right the kernel my version might differ that's okay but they use the same kernel from linux store walls which they have to have one point got from www.linux. sorry www.kernel.org 
You can also go to the site and you can browse for that kernel if you want to see what is the latest kernel. So doll, uh, dollar, um, sorry, the hash prompt is very important. If you see hash prompt, you have to be very careful in the system because there are basically two commands. Uh, one is the command, one command is which can be executed only by the super user user. Okay, mainly those commands have got higher privileges or many of these commands would be destructive commands. Okay. Destructive commands means um, you can destroy something. For example, uh, your kernel is in the system, right? Your kernel is installed in the system. As a root user, you can log in and you can delete the kernel. Okay, even though when the system boots up, the kernel is in the memory, but the kernel file will be in your system. You can delete the kernel, no problem. But what happens when you reboot your system next time, what will happen? Your system will not boot because your kernel is not there. So you have performed a destruction, correct? So be very mindful, okay? I'm repeating it again and again. Be very mindful when you are in hash prompt. You are having a super user privilege. Super user privilege means you can do anything. It's just like Spider-Man, Superman, or any, um, 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 what do you say, supernatural power, um, uh, what do you say, um, characters which can do anything. Right, which a normal user cannot do. So with uh, um, uh, great power, you will have great responsibilities also, right? So if you are a root user or if you are a prompt, if you are in a hash prompt, keep in mind that you have great responsibilities, correct? You should not misuse that. So with a slight negligence of yours, a entire system can go down, okay? You have to understand the seriousness of this. Why I'm explaining or stressing on this is because you have to understand that what a root user can do or a super user can do. When I say super user, you have to understand that it is root user. There is only one super user, which is called root, R-O-O-T, okay? So what will happen is that when you log in as this user, you have full control on the system, right? You can delete application, you can install application, you can do whatever you want in the system. Imagine that your system is performing some critical application, right? For example, this uh, Zoom meeting, which we are um, connecting right now, it is running on some system on some server on Zoom, right? What will happen is that if a user logs in and if he basically deletes that application, all our sessions, everything will terminate, right? No one will be able to, I will not be able to deliver the session. You will not be able to attend it, correct? So this is very important that you understand the functionality or you understand the responsibility of a root user, correct? So when you are in hash prompt, you have to be alert that I'm in hash prompt. Before executing a command, you should think twice that am I doing it right or not? Do I need, once you press enter, there is no turn back. Okay, there is no revert back, right? So uh, be very careful when you execute commands in the hash prompt. Dollar prompt is a very simple term. I mean, it's just said like normal user. He cannot um, cross his boundaries. That means, for example, um, I have a username called Liju. I logged in. I cannot access any other user's folder or any other user's file unless or until I am granted that permission. By normally, I will have only access to my permission. So that's not a cause of concern, right? So um, <clears throat> whatever I have, if I have deleted something, it's my uh, thing, um, only I'm going to suffer, correct? Not the other persons. But if a root user go and delete anything, then it might, uh, it will affect uh, all other users. It will affect even the system, correct? So you have to be very careful when you're working on the hash prompt dollar prompt also, but dollar prompt dinner is that you are a normal user, right? You have lesser permission. You have lesser restriction. You can't execute all the commands. You can execute only commands which you have access to or which a normal user can access to, right? 99% of the commands which a normal user can execute are non-destructive commands. Non-destructive means it will not cause any harm to the system. You can view the system. You can view the information, okay? 
you can if you have access to others files maybe you can view that but you cannot delete that okay so this is something uh, which is very important and um, i will be just going through few of the commands and then i will show you demo how, how this can be done um system information okay um you can just uh, view it or people who want you can maybe take a um, um, book and pen you can write it down i will also share some of the um, uh, i will also share uh, what to say the the commands and all those things which i have taught at the end of the class uh, so that you can go through it and you can practice um, in your home when you have your systems ready okay so you have got u name u name is basically a command which basically um, helps you to un, um, get the information about your system like what type of system it is what is the host name uh, what is the uh, kernel uh, the system has got installed what how much time the system is up and running like when you switch on the system it may be running for half an hour one hour five days 10 days 365 days right many things so uh, with uname command you come to know that how long the system is up and running what is the kernel all those information what is the architecture of the system it could be x86 x86 64 now 99% of the system you will be seeing x86 64 because 64 bit architecture is there. earlier days you also used to have a 32 bit architecture system okay so then you have something called as um, host name ctl host name ctl means every system like for example you have some name which your parents have assigned to you correct so with which um, your friends your um, when you go to college uh, your address with the name, your friend's ex addresses uh, you with that name. Sometimes uh, people might also have nicknames, short names, what do you call it, right? So similarly, every system uh, should also have a name associated with it so that you can identify the system, right? So there are some files also, uh, like um, uh, your slash etc host name. We'll be speaking about these things uh, where you can uh, see that what host name is that or what name is assigned to these particular systems okay now there are a few commands um, which you basically want to understand like basically who has logged into the system all right these all things so uh, let's go to that command from directly and uh, let me just show to you uh, so that you can understand uh, these things um, uh, straight away okay So once you okay, let me just share the complete uh, my desktop so that you have access to this um, whole thing. Okay, so do you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, so this yes, is, sir. yeah, so this is how, once you have installed this Oracle Virtual Box, this is how it looks like. Uh, once you install it, uh, on the left-hand side, you will have a, uh, your operating system installed. When you start it, you can basically see this and uh, this is how it basically looks. So, <clears throat> Uh, let me log in and I'm getting the IP address of the system. Um, everyone, I believe that everyone is aware of the IP addresses. And um, let me connect to the system using Putty, which makes it easy for me to work. Otherwise, you can work on this also directly. So, um, okay, I've got a uh, system and um, let me log into it. Okay, now let me minimize it. I don't want this. So we'll be working on this terminal. So do you, everyone, I hope everyone can see my terminal, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So this is how it looks like when I log into a system. So when I log into a system, uh, you will need two things. One is username and one is password, right? Which is basically called as credentials, okay? So as I told, you can log in as a normal user or you can log in as a root user. 99% of the time, your organization will not allow you to log in as root user. Okay, you have to log in with your user ID. Once you log in with your user ID, then you can basically switch to a, a root user or you can use something called sudo or something like that we will speak about later to basically get root access. 
or elevate your permission to a root accessing. But just for demonstration purposes here, I am logging to the system as root. When we see uh, the user permission, I will show you how to create a user and how to log into that system using that user so that you can, I will show you how to also log in as a normal user, okay? So um, just by using W command, I can see that who has logged in. On the left-hand side, you can see that it's a root user, right? I have logged in from basically this IP address. So this is my IP address of my local system from where I have logged in. And these are things we will look on later. And uh, these are something like how much is the ideal time, CPU and all those things. Okay, not a problem or concern here. So second thing, basically, first thing what you log, when you log into the system, first thing uh, what you should, uh, C is basically your host name. Okay, when you look the host name, you enter the host name, uh, you will get something like uh, your host name. Here my host name is server.example.com. So this is my host name. So this is like a name assigned to this computer. Okay, so just like you have a name, the computer also has got a name. The, the, the name of my uh, server um, is basically server.example.com. Okay. Uh, you can of course change it. We will see that how you can change it out. And the second thing, what you basically look into is basically the uname command. Okay, just by issuing the uname, uh, you will see that the kernel name, the Linux is the kernel name. Okay, if you use a uname minus a command, you will get a lot of other informations. Like the first thing is basically Linux, which is kernel. Second is basically your host name, right? So. Uh, let me tell you that key in Linux, there is not only one way, there are multiple ways to get an output. Okay, if you want a host name, you can use uname minus a, but you can also use host name, you can use other commands also to get the host name. But host name is a command which is dedicatedly used to get the host name. Okay, then you have something called as kernel. So, this is something called as kernel. I have got a kernel version of 3.10 dot o hyphen one one six zero dot el seven dot x eighty six underscore sixty four what this tells is that this is a x eighty six sixty four kernel el seven means it is enterprise linux seven that means a red hat enterprise linux seven i'm using a red hat operating system how you come to know that we'll see okay so for timing you understand that these are the three important things what we want to know there are many other things also along with that so for that, you have to use something called a switcher. So minus A, I've used this called switch. Every Linux command um, uh, will be having it. Not every, but uh, I would say majority of the Linux, or I would say 99.999 uh, commands, uh, percent of the commands will have switches. Switches add more functionality to the commands. Like if I just used uname, you will only get the Linux output. But I, when I use uname minus A, and uh, always ensure that uh, the commands are case sensitive. If you use a uh, caps letter uname, it will say unrecognized command, command not found. So Linux commands are case sensitive. All are basically lower case commands, okay, uname. So whenever you want to add a switch, the switch will be followed by the command with a space. So first thing, uname and space, and then you use minus A. So minus is basically a, um, parameter put up to say that I'm going to follow a switch. So A is a switch here. Okay, so it adds a functionality. When you use A, it gives you a lot of other information. Okay, so if I use minus R, it gives me some other information. What it gives? It gives me information like the kernel information, right? So how do I know about it? So what do you need to do is that if you want to have a command, so what you do is that you issue the command you name for any command, and then you use minus minus help. So if you use minus minus help, okay, you can use minus minus help with almost any command, right? You command space minus minus help. So it will give you information like what all things are there. Like for example, minus A, or you can either use minus A or you can use minus minus all. Like for example, you can use my uname minus A, right? Or you uname minus A, or you can use uname minus minus all. Both will give the same output. So help will give you like which all commands are available or which all options are available for a command. Many of the commands will have hundreds of switches. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to buy heart all those things. There are only few switches which you need to use in your day-to-day -day life. But yes, obviously you will have these things accessible in your system. You don't need internet connection, nothing. 
once you have installed in a system, uh, once you are logged into the system, you can always access the help command, right? Help will help you to understand what all options and all those things are there in the command. You don't need to buy HUD. One beauty about Linux is that you don't have to buy HUD, right? You need to understand. Yes, obviously, you need to understand, you need to buy HUD some commands, like, for example, someone asks you, how do I get a host name? So obviously, you need to know the command. So that maybe you need to buy HUD. But you don't need to buy hard all the switches and all those things. For that, you have help. If you are stuck somewhere, you use command space minus minus help. Like for example, you name. But I don't know how to retrieve a kernel. What I do? Minus minus help. So what do you get? You get this minus minus help. So you can say, I've used minus R. See, or use minus minus kernel version, anything. Normally I use small switches because these are Minus minus is saying that it is a long switch. You have to type long, but why do you want to do this, right? So instead of that, I use minus R. So what does it say? What it says, it says that print the kernel release, right? There's a release. So I want to know what is the kernel release uh, which is running in the system. This is very important because you will be doing this in your system, maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Many other people might ask you that uh, once you're in a work, say, uh, hey, what is the kernel version running in your system? Right, or what is the kernel? Log into the system and get me the kernel version. So, what you do is that you in a minus R. Okay, so this is basically the not kernel version, but basically the kernel release. Okay, the kernel version is something different. The kernel version is something uh, this is what is being displayed. So, if you have paid attention, you can see that the host, uh, the kernel name, host name, the kernel release, and this is a kernel version. Right. It, uh, this thing. So this kernel version means hash SMP means symmetrical multiprocessing um, uh, kernel. And this kernel was basically um, uh, basically installed or not installed, basically, basically uh, generated. Who generated this kernel? Red Hat. Correct? Because this is operating system from Red Hat. We'll see how, how I identified it. On 18th August, on this particular time, EDT, Eastern, uh, what to say, uh, 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 daylight uh, saving time, I believe, EDT uh, time zone, okay, and uh, on a year 2020, right? Uh, so on this year, on this 2020, at this time, August 12th, 18th, 14th, uh, 2.50 uh, p.m., this particular kernel was being, what, developed, not developed, was being released by Red Hat, okay? So, this is a release, what do you call basically? Sorry, so this is the version, what do you call basically? This is a version of the kernel, right? And this is basically a release of kernel. But many of the time, okay, in practically I have seen that many of the time people speak in a different way. Different mean, means they say that, ki, hey, what is the version of the kernel? So they say that, ki, hey, 3.10 is a version of the kernel. But ideally, this is not version. This is a release. What people say is basically wrong, right? In when you get to the work, many of the people say that key, many of the project manager or your manager or many people say that, can you get me the version of the kernel? Okay, ideally they are wrong, right? The version of kernel is different. They act, what they meant is basically they want to have the release of the kernel, right? So if they ask you to get the uh, release of the kernel, you have to say, uh, you have to issue the command UNA minus R, okay? UNA minus R. So if you type a ROM command, like for example, I typed a U name and it says that the command is not there. So if you get this, you have to look into the command, what you have right. So many of the people, what they make mistake is basically when they type in hurry and all those things, they make mistake by issuing wrong commands and then say that a hey, wrong command, they are stuck, hey, what had happened, right? They are panicked. So you have to be patient you have to, before issuing the enter command, you have to read the command, right? You have to read U-N-A-M-E, good, enter, right? And U name minus space minus R, kernel, minus V, version. You can also combine switches. You can also combine switches like minus R, uh, minus V. So they will give you both information, right? Or you can use something like this, minus RV. That also give more information. You can combine more. Like for example, uh, I don't know what switches are there. Right? So what I do is that I do minus minus help. I get other information, right? So minus s, u name minus s, 
it is just like your name same thing right my assessment short kernel name or print the kernel name so as i told you initially when you type your name or your name manager you get the kernel name so linux is basically a kernel name it's not an operating system so operating system is what here it is printed print the operating system so operating system is what the operating system is gnu slash linux this is your operating system so generally when people say that people say that a hey, linux operating system they are okay they are right but they are not completely right right when you someone asks that hey what is your operating system you have to say gnu slash linux that is the correct way of representing linux okay when someone says hey what operating system you run linux linux is not the correct answer linux is only the kernel what operating system you run i run gnu slash linux right what kernel do you run i run linux kernel right this is what you have to tell this is what you have to understand so minus p will give you the processor information right processor you see minus p processor print the processor information this is also very important right processor in not in information basically what type of architecture it is okay minus i also will give you the hardware and 99% 99.99% page what you will see is that uni minus p and uni minus i will have the same output because normally it is a x86 64 bit system that is a 64 bit architecture so your processor and hardware platform both will be having the same architecture clear yeah. so uh, uh, minus m if you call minus m there also you will get the same thing because this is also dependent on the hardware there is machine architecture so it's like print the machine hardware name right so many of the time the in your organization on your time you might be uh, asked to get lot of information right so many of the time what information do you might need to get is uni minus o is operating system. sorry uni minus o this is something which you need to remember right if you forget not a problem help you can always anyone can remember the help command right minus minus help you can obviously go and find it out right but for a shortcut minus o is something which you want to remind remember which is basically gnu slash linux right minus r it is very important this is something which you want to which you are going to remember minus n is your host name you can also identify your host name with minus n okay you name minus n is a i would say a safe method to retrieve the host name the host name can also be used but there is a danger associated with it i will tell you why what it is because i have seen practically many people doing it and they land up in trouble okay so if someone ask you to get the host name the safest method is u name minus n okay why i have said safest is because u name is a non destructive command whatever you type including u name whatever command you type this is not going to cause any harm in the system this is the safest command it only retrieves the information okay it will only retrieve information it cannot do any changes in the system that is why i told you that u uh, name minus r whenever someone ask you to get the host name u name minus n is the safest command host name also is a uh, good command see host name can also be done but host name has got a problem i will tell you when we will speak about that okay okay there are few things uh unix you know when running on you know is unix shell no your genio is not a unix shell genio is basically as i told now gnu's not unix it's a it's, it's a name it's a name to represent uh the system okay it's a name to represent the system gnu slash linux gnu's full form is basically genius not unix that is what you call genius not unix so you call it how it is pronounced gnu is pronounced as gnu gnu slash linux why is gnu slash linux because genu was developed by richard m stallman right so they combined the applications in gnu with the linux torvalds kernel so that's why the operating system as i mentioned operating system is not only kernel and not only the application software when it is combined you call it as operating system so that's why it is called as gnu slash linux so gnu is not a shell gnu is a uh, basically an operating system identifier you can call it as right okay the other question is basically minus minus help minus minus help is with every 
command. Okay, with almost every command you can say. There are only few commands where minus minus help doesn't work. Maybe there, there is another method to it. We will see that. But uh, majority, I would say 99.999, what I call it as, uh, all the commands will have minus minus help command. Clear? Okay. So whenever you are uh, you are you are basically um, um, putting in the chat, uh, put in it public so that uh, put it to everyone uh, so that um, everyone can basically see that and maybe they can also um, uh, see that uh, okay what you have typed and what uh, the answer is okay otherwise they might um, uh, think that maybe what I'm speaking about right so everyone has come here to learn Linux don't feel ashamed that you don't know anything or maybe. You have typed a wrong question. This is totally okay. Um, we are here to learn Linux. Uh, if uh, I know that many other people have zero knowledge in Linux, we uh, your objective of these last three classes is to make you understand or learn Linux. Okay, so please feel to ask question. Don't hesitate that a uh, whatever I have typed in the chat uh, or I have asking a stupid question. No, don't feel like that. Okay, so please feel free to put in chat or ask me questions directly. Okay, Guna, I think you have got my answer. Okay, let's move forward. So, um, uh, so you name is some basic command which you are going to uh, uh, use it in your system. Okay, so you can safely use it. So two takeaway from this command: you name minus r, which is very important. This is going to use it, and secondly, you name minus uh, u. Sorry, not u uh, n. Okay, so if you have put up some switch which is not there, you will get something like this invalid option. That means it is not there. So if you are in um, and the lemma that how we should type, then you can always use minus minus set. So it'll give you information. Okay, so it will give you like some display says that minus minus set. That means display this command and it exit. Some commands are only uses minus h, right? But not all. Like for example, you name don't have it, so uh, you can't know about it, right? Which uses minus h and which uses minus minus h. So you have to basically use minus minus help. If it doesn't work, you can use minus h. But minus minus H is something which will work for all. So uh, first thing uh, we spoke about minus R and second is basically minus uh, minus N. So these are the two commands which you normally will be using. The rest of the commands are there, but normally from my experience, uh, the other things um, are very rarely used. Okay. At some point of time, maybe uh, you might uh, use uni minus P, otherwise um, not. Yes, of course. Uh, you name minus O is also needed because many of the time uh, there are um, uh, like uh, there are multiple operating system in say if your environment have only Linux uh, then you don't need minus O because you know that it is Linux but there are uh, some environment where you will be running uh, like Solaris, AX, HPUX uh, or Unix or which are Unix like operating system so they all have you name command right so when they type you name minus O in a Solaris you will get a different output you say that Solaris so for that, there are many some uh, scripts which will be running commonly on Unix-like systems. So you need to identify like, okay, if it is a GNU slash Linux, then you run this command, otherwise not. Okay, for that purpose, you might write, but otherwise uh, not needed. So these are few of the commands which are uh, basically uh, used in a day-to-day -day life. You have to remember this. Okay. Uh, Manoj, uh, uh, when you say not supporting, what do you mean that? Sir, uh, I am sharing my screen uh, that uh, I don't know how what is going on. Um, it's okay, no not problem. Supporting. We will we will look into it later when uh, during our uh, break sessions or when we are back after the lunch. Correct. Okay. okay. So that okay. otherwise we will be disturbing the class. Okay, but uh, we will okay. talk the question. Please uh, remind me uh, when we are. I will be back. I won't take much time from the lunch. I'll be back okay. to at least 15 minutes. Before. Sir, sir, actually I disturb uh, in between because uh, I think and that uh, I have to I have to download the setup. Uh, that will take time. So I think- uh, uh, no, worries, no worries, no problem. You can download uh, because um, I don't know, because uh, during the session, if you keep downloading, maybe I don't know about your bandwidth. Uh, so if your bandwidth is affecting, maybe your, your I mean, the class session might get affected, right? Because you if you're downloading in the background, um, if you are a good bandwidth connection, that is okay, not a problem. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, you can download the session maybe um, uh, today uh, before we go and then the session I will spend some if you can sit for some more time. 
uh, maybe uh, I can also show you the installation of the Linux how to do it. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So that you guys can uh, do it out. Uh, let's see. I mean, during the lunch, after the lunch break, or maybe how you can quickly come in. So we can take that call. Okay. Cool. So uh, this is first thing. Second is basically uh, first. Uh, I, I've already uh, told you, and that you can use W command and or you can use who am I. Okay, who am I will only give you what user I am logged in as. Like for example, I say that who am I? I've logged in as um, root user because I am a root user, right? I've logged in as root. And then um, basically just look on few of the commands um, which we have. Okay. Okay, so the other command which you would be interested and in your organization, you would be basically asked many of the time is basically uptime. Uptime is a command which is very important to understand that how long the system is up and running. Like for example, uh, date is a command to show the date. Like for example, here you can see the date is basically uh, this 11.06. When I see the date, the date is changing because it is keep, keep on changing, right? Um, it is running in the background. So here when I use uptime, you can see the time has changed. Here it is this thing, I doesn't. So this first thing, it shows that uh, your system's current time when you have executed the uptime command. Second up means your system is up and running. Obviously, this doesn't make much sense because um, if your system is down, um, you cannot run up and uptime command, right? So, uh, but it just to show that it is up. Then it gives you the time. See, my system is up and running since one hour, 53 minutes, right? So in a production environment or in a server, your system could be running for 30 days, 365 days, thousand days, depending upon your, your organization system reboot policy. Every organization would have some reboot policy, right? Uh, your, your system can reboot. When a reboot means your, you can reboot your system, like, like your windows or other operations, you can shut down, you can reboot, right? So after a reboot, you can identify the, how long the system has been running. So sometimes your system might, uh, your organization might update some patches, like uh, security fixes, bug fixes, or patch in the system. And after that, they might reboot the system. So um, uh, this time will tell you how long it has been running. So it is basically showing in uh, hours right now. Once the hour is completed, once it basically say 24 hours, it says uh, more than 24 hours, then it will show it in days, right? So it will show you like how many days it has been running, right? So this is very important, uptime. Second is basically two users. Why two users? Because if you look at the W command, I have logged in as one from the, um, from the uh, terminal uh, of this, which this particular uh, Oracle VirtualBox terminal. And second is basically I have logged in using the uh, putty, that is SSH. Okay, we'll talk about that. So that's why it is showing us two users. One is from the terminal directly. You don't have, that's why it's showing us no IP address here. Second is basically your, your IP address. That means I've logged in from my laptop using a putty, using an SSH, okay. Uh, I, I believe that uh, many other people uh, might have used a putty, right? If directly or at least from your, um, when you're working in your college or maybe when you're dealing with the system or doing some uh, things uh, in your college days, right? Or some projects or something like that. Or not, I will show you what it does basically later. Okay, uh, so uptime is very important. And these two things, uh, uh, two, these are the, uh, what are the uh, components here? One, two, three, four, five, five components here. One is basically a time, second it shows us whether it's up and running. Second is basically, third is basically how long it is up and running. Third is basically, uh, fourth is basically how many users are logged into the system. And um, fifth is basically the load average. <laughs> This load average. We will look into the load average later. For timing, understand that by looking at the load average, you can identify that how stressed your system is. <coughs> Sorry. How stressed your system is. How much load your system is handling. Okay, that is the measurement of this load average. Okay, this basically one minute, five minutes, and uh, 15 minutes load average. Okay, we will see it. Uh, when we come across, um, uh, what to say, system monitoring and all those things in the second or the third day. Okay. So uh, for today's session, you have to understand uptime means what is the current date you can get and the uptime. 
and the how many users are logged into the system, right? So uh, in a real-time environment, um, there could be hundreds of systems, hundreds of users logging into a system from different, different place, right? From home, from different countries or from different uh, places, wherever the user is sitting, they might be logging to your system. Administrator could be logging. In. Not every user might need to log in your system, but for some purpose, they might log into a system for something. So if you want to see how many users are logged in, you can use this command. Okay, you can also use W command, which will give you more detailed information from where they are logging, how many times they are ideal. Like here, you can say that it is being ideal for zero seconds because I'm working. But in the terminal, has been identified from the um, uh, console, you call it as console basically. I've been ideal for 26 minutes. So if I go and uh, uh, type something over here in this console, like for example, I type something over here and come back, um, say this terminal and I use um, uh, W, so you can say 13 seconds. So that means 13 seconds ago, I have done some activity on that. But before that, it was ideal for 26 minutes. Yes, you can say S yes means seconds. So it means total is seconds. If there is no S, yes, then you can identify that it is as minutes, right? So um, then uh, you can also identify that key what is being uh, running over there. So there was something in a bash shell. Here I am running a W command. So here I'm running a W command, right? That's why uh, it's it shows as W, right? Okay, so uh, this is something uh, which you uh, do and uh, we have seen the uname, uname minus R, host name and all those things we have seen. The other important thing, one important thing we actually want to identify is basically your IP address. Okay, every system which is in a network will have an IP address. So many of the time you will need this information, what IP address is there. Obviously, if you have a host name, you can get the IP address, but maybe directly when you log into the system, you want to get the IP address of that particular host. So for that, what you call as you can use host name space minus I. Okay, you have to be very careful with the uh, 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 with the uh, host name command, I will tell you. Okay, for time being, maybe in your um, organization you might not get all this information because here IPv6 is enabled in my system. Okay, so if in many other organization IPv6 may not be enabled, only IPv4 is there. So here it gives the information of IPv6 addressing also, but we are only concerned about IPv4, right? I'm sure that key you all might know about IPv4 and IPv6. Anyone who doesn't knows about IP, IP, IP addressing? Anyone? Can you put in the chat? Okay, I hope that everyone understands the uh, IP addressing. Okay, cool. So, cool, great. So this is my IP address, 192.168.1.14. This is my IP address. This is, this is the IP address with which I can identify that uh, along with the name of the system, I have got an IP address also. So even though your system may be communicating with the name, but back end your system is basically communicating using the IP address. Okay, so this is very important for you to understand IP address. There are other commands also to identify the IP address, which is basically called if config command. If config command also will give you the IP address command. So uh, when you issue the if config, you can, you have something or there could be something called uh, interface name. Okay, we will look into it later, but just for time being, uh, you just have to understand host name minus I. Okay, this is very important. Um, and you have to be very familiarized with this. Okay, so now other important thing is that when I log in, um, um, what is my ID? Okay, so ID means every user who logs in, he will have an ID. Keep in mind, we will be looking more into it in the later session of the class when we learn about user management. So root user will always have a, you, every user will have two things. One is UID and one is GID, okay? So UID is means user identification number, GID means group identification number. Every user will be associated with a uh, with a group, okay, uh, to a minimum. So user, you have to keep in mind that the root always will, will have a UID of zero and GID of zero. This is something which you have to understand thoroughly, okay? So this, all other rest of the other information is not relevant to us. Uh, these are the things which we have to know. These are the three things basically. We will look into it later, but time may, 
if you want to whoever has logged in you can use id command directly to understand what is the id of that particular user who is logged in okay you want to see the hey what is my id you can see that when a normal user logs in his id will be different okay and uh, then we have something called uh, last last is a command which you can basically see that the who has logged in when the system has uh, was being logged and from where it was logged and so and so okay so there's not this important but still it is okay you can identify that uh, um uh, uh, uh since what since a few time you can hear is that september 6 there was a system reboot okay um and um, september 6 1831 the root has logged in then he again rebooted again rebooted so i think uh, i was doing some activity on the system maybe for testing right on september 6 and then after i logged in only on september 11th um uh, which is basically um uh, uh today's date if you look on uh september 17th and uh nine um 9 a.m i basically 9 7 a.m i basically um logged in right and i basically logged out at the time for uh, i was active for two minutes right and after that uh, uh not uh, not logged in basically the system basically rebooted the system basically booted so i basically started it and after that i basically logged in and i basically logged out so and after that i basically logged into the terminal now why i know that um, uh, terminal because it is saying as tty terminal means a console right console the uh, uh, the uh, oracle virtual box console so that's why there is no ip address so if you don't see ip address you can see that they have logged in directly using the console so i have logged in at this time and i still have logged in because i have shown you and um, another terminal pts0 which is basically a pseudo terminal and uh, i have logged in using the um, this ip address that means my laptop ip address at this time is 192.168.1.6 and my system's IP address, I know it is 1.40. So I've logged in from the system. Okay, this is also important to you because um, sometimes while troubleshooting, you might know that, hey, which user has logged in from what system? Okay, for troubleshootings and all purposes, you, you, you might need this. So this is also important, last command. And here I can say that I'm still logged in. That means you are still in the system, right? You can say that it is still logged in. So like that, you can identify that key, what user are logged in, when they have logged in and till what time they were active and what system was rebooted. So if, if your um, uh, team lead or if your manager says that, hey, um, log into the system and let me know um, when the system was last rebooted, correct? So you can log into the system and you can see system reboot. You can see that, hey, my, the system was booted back or you can see the system was rebooted at um, September 17 and 9, 27. Right, so this is how you basically tell. So if there is some crash or something like that, you can say there was a crash, there was some problem in the system, it crashed. Right, so this is one method. There are many other methods to do that, but there's one method. Clear? So this is how you identify who have logged in and um, what has been logged in and uh, how long the system is up and running. Right, these are uh, some important commands which you have to do. Okay, one more uh, thing before we go ahead is that basically the hostname command, or basically we will do um, uh, after the break. So there are only two more minutes uh, for the break. Uh, so we learned about uname, right? Uname minus a and uh, minus minus help, right? And um, like for example, you're gonna use ID. You can use ID minus minus help. So ID is, there are a lot of things, but these are things may not be useful for us. Yes, obviously you can do, but um, many of the commands I told that key, many of the switches may not be useful for your day-to-day -day activities at all. So don't bother to learn all the switches. Yes, obviously uh, as a learning activity, you can go ahead and issue the switches. There's no problem. Okay, for example, uh, last minus minus help, you can use the last. So it says that key, hey, there is no command, there is no uh, help for this, like invalid. So I think uh, let me use for minus H. So there is nothing out there. So that means uh, help don't have any command, right? So only it has got something like minus M and so on. So this are the, there is no other help for um, uh, help or minus H or minus minus help doesn't work for us. So I know that there are very few commands which don't have this, but otherwise rest all with help. If you want like a uh, host name, host name and you can use minus minus help. So it will give you, yes, host name has got a lot of information, see? 
a uh, lot of the usage how it says that uh, many of the things may not be useful for your direct needs but uh, um, there are a lot of information which you can basically uh, get from hosting okay so let's uh, go for a break and now it is uh, around 15 and we'll be back sharp at 11 30. okay so um i'll keep the share uh, like this and uh, we will be back at another so guys see you in another 15 minutes so have your tea break and we will see you at 11 30. okay okay sir okay sir Bye.